I just want to talk a little bit about firebase authentication because that provides a, 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 in my opinion, a, a very simplified um, OAuth type flow. Um, again, it uses the JavaScript client, so you're running on the uh, HTML service, whether it's a, an add-on or something, something like that. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about React, Redux, and Material UI. I mean, they're not app script things, but if you're writing HTML service things, then you're probably going to be using some kind of framework. Um, some people use Polymer. Some people use also Angular. Some people use all sorts of things. Um, I find that React, which is a little bit like Polymer, is pretty good. Uh, and Redux is a way to um, uh, formalize your communication between your HTML objects and your backend data store. So it avoids the problem of asynchronously updating the same thing from multiple places. So um, I'm not going to go into those things too much. I just want to talk about Firebase authentication. But I had to mention that so we could, we could set the scene. So um, if we move on to the next slide, let's see. So uh, one of the things that uh, Firebase does for you is to keep a list of all your users and their email addresses, which means you don't have to, um, which is pretty cool. So it means that you can set up a, a, a system that has got registered users for whom you don't ever have to care about their email addresses. You never have to store it because Firebase does. And in fact, what you do is you, you, you this is the same console that Martin was showing earlier, except it's the authentication part of it. So this is a list of users that, that subscribe to, to one of my apps. And um, I refer to them by the user, user UID, not by their email. I never look at their email. So that's a good place to, to, to start and a good place to be. Um, and if you want to enrich that data, which, which, which I do, um, you can use the Firebase internal ID for someone to then store stuff against in a separate Firebase database um, against that Firebase UID. So again, you don't have to keep uh, email addresses in your own database or, or, or anywhere else, which is which is pretty cool. So how does all that work? Um, first of all, just before we look at the code, I'm going to just flip over to uh, an app that's using it. So actually, what this is, it's a um, it's a cross-platform cache. Um, and it kind of does some of the things that Firebase does, actually, that we are talking about earlier. It does have push notification um, of changes, but it also ha it's also got the ability to push notify app script through um, sending a post message to it. So although you can do the same thing in terms of waking people up, waking an app up that's running the JavaScript client, you can also wake app script up by sending a post message to it. So it's, it's supposed to be a cache that can be used by any platform, essentially. Um, but I do use Firebase with it a little bit, and I use it for authentication uh, and for keeping track of registered users. So to sign in, you can see up at the top, I'm signed in. I've signed in using Firebase. And if I want to sign out, I just do that, and I'm gone. And if I want to sign back in again, and I just do that, it brings up the Firebase authentication. If it didn't know me, it would ask for the usual stuff there about do you want to allow this thing to happen? But it knew me, so therefore it allowed me, and that's signed in. So that's all there is to it. And this is running React and Redux behind the scene. So we go back now to the, the slides. And we'll take a little look at the code. It, this won't make a tremendous amount of sense if you don't know um, React. But I just wanted to show how um, straightforward it is to use the authentication API, although it won't look that way if, you, if you're not familiar with this kind of approach. Um, so really, the, the, the way things work within React is that it's a kind of a mixture of HTML and JavaScript in the same uh, place. So it's exactly the opposite of what we're used to doing, which is to separate HTML and JavaScript. This mixes them up. And in fact, you create components, which you can then reuse throughout your application in various places. So the, the, the render. Um, function the random method here is what creates the thing that gets displayed on the page. And in fact, in my case, it's not what, what gets displayed in the page, but what gets displayed in that little chip, which was the pic, my picture plus my name. So this is the uh, the function that does that, and we'll take a look at uh, what happens if we're logged in, and we know that from Firebase is keeping track of it. Um, then that means that we're trying to log out. So therefore, I set up a chip 
and, and you can see in the bottom what a logged in chip looks like, which is then going to um, to to log us out. And then if I'm not logged in, I need to create a, a, a signed in chip, which is what we have here. So I'm not going into this code at all, um, but I'm going to just quickly go to what sign in and sign up does. Um, we have to use Redux at this point. And as I said earlier, Redux is a thing that controls access to a central store of all the data in your app. So all you do when you want to do something with Redux is you dispatch a, a function to it. That takes care of it and then puts the answer in a central place you can access later on. So that's the simple sign, out and sign in and sign out. And I'll get to the far base bit now. And you can see that this is all there is to it, apart from a little bit of setup, um, to do that entire authentication process. First thing you need to do is to set up the provider. Now, Firebase has multiple providers. It's not just using Google. You can also log in using um, Facebook or uh, uh, GitHub and various other providers as well. Ha I happen to want to use the Google provider, so that's what I'm doing here. Um, and then once I've set that up, I simply call sign in with pop up, which then goes ahead and works through the mechanism of finding out if someone has already logged in. If they haven't, then it'll ask them their username and password and so on. Um, and then that's it. This is this is where the cool part comes in because I think we mentioned earlier that you listen for things in Firebase rather than check for things. So so to determine whether or not someone has actually gone through the process of logging in, you set up this callback here and you listen for it. And if the auth state changes, which means that the guy has gone from being uh, logged into not logged in or vice versa, then it calls me. And I can just call my function uh, that processes someone having logged in, which was what we looked at earlier to change the little avatar and so on, um, passing to the user who had just logged in. And the cool thing is that Firebase passes also um, its user ID and anything else that I'm storing about it as well. So I think that could well be all I have. Yep, that's it. Uh, I didn't want to get into the code too much because, as I say, we could have been here for a long time. But in principle, it's just being able to um, use Firebase not only to handle the auth login, but to take care of calling you back when there's something interesting to do. And the other part that's quite good is that you, you, you can see now that you're able to use Firebase across pretty much any platform that can speak JavaScript. And that's pretty much it. It's a really nice example. I, I wasn't aware of um, the, the often you, you I'm, I'm learning a lot today. I wasn't aware of the <laughs> authentication aspect yes it's an Firebase. entirely it's an entirely um it's a it's, it's an easier way of doing OAuth if you like it's not really it's not really the same flow but it's an easier way of doing it than what you've been used to um through um the regular google OAuth uh, flow so with um some of the calls you were doing there and i noticed you were, you, you were creating a new firebase instance so are you using the the Firebase client library within. Yes, it. yeah, that, that's all stuff out of the client library. Yeah. Impressive stuff. Well, we, I think we have, we, we owe Bruce, <laughs> given all his contributions, a, a dedicated show on um, a purely exchange. Um, so we should work on that one. Uh, unfortunately, it wouldn't be our next show, which we have a date for. And fingers crossed we'll run technically smoother so uh our rescheduled show with real and romaine is on the 9th of june starting at the same time um so we hope you'll be able to join us for that so fingers crossed everything goes more smoothly next time and we hope you can join us uh, thank you to contributions from steve romaine and bruce and we'll see you on the other side thank you guys thank you Bye. Thank you.